We're in Autopsy, and in previous videos I showed you how to download, install, and create your first forensics case. Now I want to go over EXIF metadata. This is the data that's inside a photograph that may be hidden, that may actually help you in your case. Now we see about 137 different items in here, uh, mostly if not all are JPG files. Uh, in some cases, we see a docx file as well, which was basically a hidden file you'll see in another video about extension mismatches. Now, in this video, I'd like to go over the EXIF metadata. So here I can click and see the picture. If I want, I can even rotate it if that helps. Sometimes it'll show horizontal when you need to have it vertical, etc. I can also make it larger or smaller so I can zoom in on specific items if I need to just by clicking the plus or the minus. Now, if I go to File Metadata, this gives me a creation date. But this creation date is not the date that the, t the picture was taken. This creation date was the day that it was uploaded to the computer. So if you take a look at the date created here, it says 920. This is the date that the picture was taken, the date and the time and the time zone. And it even tells you it was taken on a Pixel 3a made by Google and it's uploaded to this uh, particular location. It also gives us latitude and longitude information if it was in the camera at the time, which it was. So it can tell you exactly where the picture was taken. Now, it also shows modified and access date. So uh, it shows basically the uh, access date the last time it was accessed prior to this application running, which can be very useful. And if we scroll down, it gives us a little bit more detail uh, about some of the things that we could see in this area right here. I'm also going to go to some of these other tabs, such as the results tab, which basically gives you the information that you see here, but just makes it a little bit easier to read. And you can also copy and paste that information a little bit easier as well. If I go to annotations, you see there are no annotations. So if there were any annotations added, you would be able to see them here, which sometimes can give us some clues. And if there's other occurrences, we can see under common properties that this is the location of the JPG file. It's in a particular data source called Windows Server 2016, which is the computer that we're investigating. And you can investigate you know, any version of Windows. It doesn't have to be server. It could be also Windows 10 or 8, etc. And it also gives the name of the case and the date and time. Another really useful thing is we can right click and go to properties and we can see some of the properties here that we saw earlier. So it's just a little different way of looking at it. I like to also right click and choose view results in timeline. So when we do that, we see that it's going to show the options to see the amount of time to show before and after the selected event. So the event here is when the picture was taken, which is on 9-20-2019. And it, it'll show you either you know, one minute before, one year before, one month before, one day before. I want to choose hour, for instance, and show timeline. This basically shows us what the device was up to uh, an hour before and after that the uh, picture was taken. So for instance, another picture was taken at this time right here, and another picture was taken here. And what we see is even though these pictures are exactly the same, and these two pictures are exactly the same, what you're seeing here is a temporary holding spot for that picture. And then you see the EXIF information as well. So it looks like it's two different files, but it really is the same file. As you can see, they both end in the same number. If I click on Details, we can see the pictures taken. So it shows the four different pictures. And then if we click on Counts, we can see the four events as well. So you can click on that, and down here you can see some of the information about it. I'm going to close our timeline and go back to our picture, right-click on it. And we can choose the view source file and timeline, which would basically show us the same information we saw before, but it would just show us in a different format, as well as the view source file and directory. We can choose to view in new window, and this can help us because we can then uh, have basically a pop out of the picture. So if you wanted to have several different pictures popped out so you could compare them side by side, then you could do that here. So I'll right click on this one and I'll open a new window as well. And now I'll minimize. And now I can switch between these two pictures back and forth, just like that. If I right click again, 
We can choose to add a file tag, a result tag that, that can give us information we can use later on in a project. Of course, your tag and comment, if you choose to add one, would just be visible for you as a separate add-on. It wouldn't actually affect the investigation itself other than giving you information about it. So for instance, you can say follow up, make a comment, uh, please check out spot on floor, for instance, and then you can use that later on. And here's where that shows up right here. So that's the EXIF metadata that you can see when you open up an autopsy case and you scan a drive. Sometimes you'll find that people are passing information in the file metadata and you'll be able to see that in the results, in the file metadata, possibly in the text or even in the hex. The hex has the ASCII area off here to the right. It's a little bit difficult to read, which is why you want to click these other tabs that sort of parse that all together. All these things together make EXIF metadata a great thing for you to be looking at and searching for your computer forensics case. We'll be making a lot more videos about these other areas that you see here in upcoming videos.